Welcome to Freedom Fridays. I am Daniel Myers here with yeah. Madison Crane and Lim Reber. And today we're gonna look at some rhetorical fallacies. We're gonna look at some crazy laws too. We're gonna bring them together. Crazy or maybe laws. you don't think they're crazy. You just do it and you don't complain. Okay, let's get into it. So what we're doing today is, is that really a law? Is that really a law? Rhetorical fallacies edition. Have you ever broken a law? Oh, well, we don't have to. All right, that. so the next thing that we're going to be working on is. Uh, I right, just the feel thing, like Lem has ever adding, broken a lot. Is, if there's anybody, it's Lem. Uh, which fallacies are we covering today? Kay. So today we're going to be talking about the straw man fallacy, yes. the slippery slope fallacy, mm -hmm. and the genetic fallacy. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Mm. We're all guilty of these fallacies from time to time. That's what mm, we yes. have to remember. And we want to try to use them less. So Daniel and Lem have 60 seconds each to state their case, and they have to use mm -hmm. one of these rhetorical fallacies to argue. Lemuel is going to be fighting for yes. the law. Yes, keep the and law. And Daniel is going to be fighting against it. Against? For the people. Negative Nancy himself. Mm. It's for the people. Actually, I'm, okay, that's debatable. Okay. Today, the punishment, whoever loses between me and Lem, they have to, uh, Eat some things, some Thanksgiving-y. Yes. Let's just say the cornucopia exploded, <laughs> and you <laughs> eat what's inside. It's okay. like uh, you went to the Let's kitchen after Thanksgiving, and everything on the counter, you just kind of like I'm put it all sure in a my bowl. Family does that. So I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> round one: mm. the slippery slope fallacy, mm. asserting that if we allow A to happen, then Z will consequently happen too. Therefore, A should not happen. No, oh, oh, I got times. a good one for you here, Madison. I got a good one. Well, People. let me present the law to you first. Oh, you okay. don't even oh yeah. Know oh okay. my! All right, what's the <laughs> I don't even know the law. What is the law we're debating over? <laughs> this law is from the wonderful state of Maine. It is illegal to keep Christmas decorations up after January 14th. Mm. Okay, Lem. Yes. Present to me yes, your, judge. your case. <clears throat> well, I, yes, unbiased. Objective judge. Go. All right, so here we go. Christmas time is, it's coming. It's not here, it's coming. Um, and it's a raging controversy across the plains and memes of America, right? Are you allowed to play Christmas music uh, directly after Halloween? Um, and how much time before Thanksgiving? Or if at all, and you know, whether or not it's Fortnite or two. Um, here's the thing. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure where I kind of lie on that side of the controversy. I'm kind of libertarian on this. I want less government, obviously. Uh, what? And I want people to be able to do what they want to do. But here's the thing. On the opposite end, that doesn't apply anymore here. Because on January 14th, they need to come down. Okay? I'm sorry. They need to come down because you know what's going to happen? If you have Christmas decorations up by January 14th, if you let people go past January 14th, you know what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen? You're going to get decorations on, uh, you're going to get decorations on uh, January 15th, January 16th, and March 17th, and July 4th, and October 31st, and it's going to be terrible, and pretty soon uh, those decorations are going to be in your lawn, and your kids, and your dog, and then pretty soon your neighbor is going to be jumping down the chimney um, and choking you with eggnog under the mistletoe. So that'd be bad, and so we need to keep the law. We need it. We need it. All right, one, two, three. All right. So here's the thing about these laws and government. You know, power always concentrates, it always grows. You know, once they take a little bit, they're going to take a little bit more. I mean that actually wholeheartedly, but um, when it comes to this, it makes a very easy case. If the government starts telling you when you can have Christmas decorations up, you know what else it's going to tell you next? You know how that's going to progress, the slippery slope? It's going to tell you probably when you can use toilet paper <laughs> or when you can eat or when you can um, comb your hair or something like that. And, and if the government starts telling you when Listen, you can you do those happen? things, um, it could be very bad, if you know what I mean, for obvious reasons. So obvious uh, reasons. I think that we need to keep the government out of our homes and out of our decorations specifically. Because if they tell you what kind of decorations you can have, it's going to look really nasty. Everything's going to be marble and granite. Ten seconds. And uh, it, it, it'll be very depressing, very depressing. No more cushy chairs to sit on at home. I think when you need to use toilet paper, it should be fairly obvious. Not to the government. Oh. I'm very big on making sure your Christmas decorations are down after, at least after January 1st. The reason You're why in like uh, some fascist territory I'm there, the type of person who likes to take my decorations down the day after Christmas because it's so depressing to be looking around like there are 364 days until Christmas comes again mm. and I have all these decorations. It's like mm. it's like the corpse of Christmas. Oh, the corpse of Christmas. No! House. Very oh, depressing. You got Charles Dickens. Okay, I think 
Um, Lemuel wins that yes! round. Yes! Because I hate Christmas decorations after Christmas. What about the slippery slope argument? Mm. I literally used the word slippery slope <laughs> in my argument. But did you actually use a slope that was slippery? I yes, think so. I used a chimney. Hmm. Round two. Hmm. This is the straw man fallacy, misrepresenting someone's argument to make it easier to attack. This is from the state of Washington. Mm. The harassing of Bigfoot, Sasquatch, or other undiscovered subspecies is a felony punishable by fine and or imprisonment. And here's the problem with this law. Other than it's absolute trash. People that want to protect Bigfoot. Hey, watch your mouth. Your Honor, please control him. People that want to protect Sasquatch, Bigfoot, you know, whatever you want to call his furry friends. They care more about Bigfoot than they do actual people, okay? <laughs> Is there a law in uh, Washington that says you cannot harass people? I doubt it. But there's a law that says you can't <laughs> harass Bigfoot. Why does he get some sort of special treatment? I thought everyone seconds. was supposed to be treated equally under the law. Isn't oh. that like what America's all about? Mm. Inalienable rights and mm. stuff like that. Um, so it's obvious that these people don't understand the Constitution. This is a very unconstitutional law and um, I think it's absolute trash. It needs to be overturned, preferably today, if that's possible. Well, this will be difficult <laughs> to shoot on down. <laughs> Good luck, buddy. Go. Good luck. Okay, listen, if you want to harass Bigfoot, listen, there. first of all, I can understand where it, it might seem like a little bit of a, uh, it might seem like a little bit of a paradox where it says you're not allowed to harass undiscovered things. Like, isn't it, like, by definition, if you're harassing it, you've discovered it? But anyway, that's all aside. Hmm. I, uh, listen, there's only two kinds of people that want to actually harass Bigfoot or find Bigfoot, okay? There's those people on those cheesy TV shows with, like, literally, there's three segments, okay? And they go exactly, every single show goes exactly like this, okay? They find some local yokel or two with some unsubstantiated, completely <laughs> anecdotal claim about, oh, I saw! Them out there, and then seconds. number two, uh, they're like, "Well, let's map out the terrain and see where we're gonna catch them." And then number three, they're in the dark trying to catch them. Like, "Oh, I heard something!" And oh crap, we didn't find them. Every time they don't <laughs> find them. There's only one. That's that's the first kind of people that want to harass and find Bigfoot. Number two, are uh, people that want to uh, steal Bigfoot eggs. Okay, listen. I hate if you want to harass Bigfoot, you're just wanting to steal Bigfoot eggs. It's obvious. Five seconds. You're just a Bigfoot baby killer. I'm sorry. You're just that's you're you're stealing their eggs. I'm sorry. And and you shouldn't do that. It's bad. I would like to know where where was the straw man in that? So it's obvious by eggs. your disagreement with my argument. <laughs> okay. Let's not lose sight of the fallacy here, Judge. I don't think Bigfoot. Not lose sight of the fallacy. Lays eggs. Okay, um, Daniel wins this round. Yes! Why? Yes! Why? Yes! What are the, he, what are the obvious he, reasons? He directly misinterpreted your argument. Yes. What? He yes. didn't even know my argument. I hadn't even said it. <laughs> it <doesn't> Judge. <laughs> Here, listen, Protect he wanted Bigfoot. Listen, listen, he Why? wanted to harass Bigfoot. And I said, no, he doesn't want to actually harass Bigfoot. He just wants to steal Bigfoot eggs. Or he wants to be one of those annoying people on Bigfoot shows that nobody likes. This is a travesty of well, justice. Well, you guys are tied. So you have an opportunity uh, to win. Woo. I don't I like want to be eating the exploded cornucopia. <laughs> I want to just be in peace. I like it when the stakes are high. Okay, round three, and this is the final round. They are going to be arguing the genetic fallacy. Mm, Judging yeah. something good or bad on the basis of where it comes from or from whom it comes. So we're going to be discussing this law from Texas. Gotta love Texas. Mm -hmm. It is illegal to sell one's eye in Texas. Mm. Okay, go. All right, so listen, uh, as a libertarian, I generally want less government. I want more more uh, freedom in our lives. But listen, the eyeball market needs to stay uh, isolated from Texas. Texas isolated? And eyeball market need to stay far apart. You cannot trust any eyeballs that are sold from those people in Texas. I'm telling you, they got ringworm and pink eye and stink eye and all the things oh. down there. You don't want that in the eyeball market convoluting and confusing and uh, really... Uh, infecting the uh, the pure eyeball market that is out there. Um, we really listen. We don't really want that. And listen, like the uh, like it's it's not a good source. Listen, there's it's just problematic from the get go. Also, you can't trust eyeball dealers. Everybody knows that. Like everybody knows that, especially from from Texas. I tried to return an eyeball once in Texas, and like it did not go well. They said that I had run into an icicle, which clearly I hadn't. Okay, listen, it just it wasn't working. It was a it was a faulty Three product. Seconds, it was two, a faulty product, one. but they wouldn't say that you can't trust eyeball dealers in Texas or their eyeballs. He hits the, the timer and then he always <laughs> just keeps, keeps talking. talking every time. It's great. I don't know how you're gonna combat that. Yeah. Oh, it's easy. Go. Wait, let me burn! <laughs> whoa, whoa, no. hey. Was, all right. 
So this law is obviously a law that needs to be overturned because the people of Texas should have the right to sell their eyeballs to whomever they please, nope, whenever nope, they please, nope. whichever eyeball they prefer to sell. And the reason that this uh, law is absolute trash and should be overturned is because it's very tyrannical. It actually has its origins uh, in the Middle Ages of Shetland. Shetland is my favorite land. Mm, like a Shetland pony? <laughs> Wait, my seriously? favorite land. No, this is, this is uh, fictitious. Um, but uh, it's for the sake of this genetical argument. Hmm. Uh, it's a fa fallacy I'm doing here. Okay, so it, it originated in the Middle Ages in Shetland as a way to keep the peasants of Shetland from climbing the hierarchy of power because the king knew if they actually had functioning eyeballs, they would see that his castle was actually just a hut and they would oh. easily overrun it and uh, take power back to the Shetland peasants. So what I say is, origin of this law is trash, Five therefore seconds. the law should not be tolerated today in our country of freedom. That sounds like a load of barnacles. Oh, a load I of barnacles! I like barnacles. What's <laughs> wrong with barnacles? A load of bull jive! What if that really happened? That didn't happen. Someone look up the history of Shetland. Okay, so what I'm gonna have to do here is think about the uh, fallacy, genetic uh, fallacy. I am thinking about okay. it. No, no, no. I okay, listen, listen, listen. It. You're already listen. Okay, what we're talking about is where it comes from. I listen, know where, where it, the source from. of Texas so, eyeballs are is obviously corrupted. Sir. Obviously, you can't trust them. I tried to return an eyeball once to an eye dealer, okay, and okay, he said okay, that I ran into I, an icicle, I, I and I obviously this. had not. There are no icicles in Texas, sir. Thank you. Very much. But you know what? There was too much logic for him. I think he had two replaced eyeballs. Faulty Texas eyeballs, if I, had, if I might suggest. But I don't have the evidence for that, so I'm not going to go where the evidence does not uh, suggest. Uh, the the answer is clear okay. here. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to. I've already made my decision. Oh, oh! But I'm gonna, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna have to talk you guys through it so you can understand. Oh, I guess through it, I need to be oh, let down okay. gently. <laughs> okay, okay. Please. Can't stop laughing at what he said. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Our judge is hysterical. Look what you've done. Weed. Okay, so I'm just gonna come out and say it. Lemuel wins this round. Yes! Oh! yes! That is not yes! acceptable. He wins okay. this round because listen, he used it perfectly. Oh. Um, yes. You started saying that there, there was you can't trust those eyeball dealers. There's too it's much obvious. of a bad rep. I'm sorry, Daniel, but. Court is adjourned. Oh, that's too bad. Well, this is not. We have some things for you, Daniel. You Myers. probably are friends with Shetland or something. All right. I don't so. even believe Shetland is real. Look in the comments if you think I won. Let me know dog. because I need some affirmation. I, I need affirmation. No, the thing is, your arguments were making me want to believe you. You weren't using the I fallacies. I was making awesome. Properly. I was using them absolutely properly. All right, properly. so we're gonna. Oh, it's time for Daniel. To now eat you would have won. It was lies. It, you don't go into court and make up lies. The whole purpose That's of the argument was to make an example of the genetic fallacy. It was inaccurate. Fallacy. There was no truth to your fallacy. All right, let's move slumbers. on before we hit right. the replay, and then that that call is brought back, and all right. it's overturned. All right, here we go. It's happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We're gonna be mixing oh, up some that's things. A good point. Daniel Marshy, what have we got here? We have got mashed some. Potatoes. Sparkling mm -hmm. things. I have an order to this. Pour the mashed potatoes in with your. Is that? I have an order here. For Daniel. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. Totally non alcoholic. Mash does, apple actually. filling. Yeah, yes. Fun. And mashed potatoes and stuffing and red sparkling. More, cider. more of this. Oh, whoa. We've got some green beans and. Oh, oh, you're putting a pie in so there? I'm putting it yeah. In oh, you put yeah. the pie I'm in. It. The look at the oh, side. It looks like bean dip. Oh, this because does not look good. We're going to make this an art. Um, oh. Let's make it. Wow. Uh, I like that. Uh, it's all about presentation. It's kind of beautiful. Please I cut mean, that out. Minus the pumpkin pie in the middle. Oh, okay. I think I should get a little. Oh. Eat it with that. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Get d deep in there. Okay. Deep down. Uh, well, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yes, I wait. hope you're thankful. Yes. But before you do, Madison and I get to enjoy oh. some spoils. You get to eat pie, normal it's pie. Cold. Uh, oh, what is that? Oh. oh, that's the that's the pie in there. So we got sparkling grape juice in here, corn and beans and mashed potatoes and stuffing. Mmm. Mm, yes. All right, right I'm very happy. Don't lose a rhetorical fallacy competition. Uh, Three, well. two, one. Mm. I can't get it. Oh. <laughs> Describe this. What's going on? In that mouth. Mm. Oh, many things. Well, this is good. My brain is very confused. It's a little pie. Oh. I think I'm getting diabetes from this. <laughs> oh boy. Well, this is nice. Oh boy. Ah. <laughs> oh. Ugh. Ugh. 
Okay, Dr. Pepper's got nothing on this. This is 23 flavors for real. Mm. One at a time mm. in your mouth mm. and your body just doesn't know what to do. Mm. Oh. It's like mass confusion in my mouth. It's the best thing that's ever made me want to get. What is the mass, what's the mashed potatoes taste like? Kind of like sandy, you know? Thank you all for watching. I don't know. Um, I hope that your Thanksgiving leftovers are better than <laughs> these. Hey, you oh. be grateful you don't have to eat that. Ugh. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Mm. Make sure you watch our other content. Yes. Ugh. And remember until next time. Ugh. Just stop yelling <laughs> and start thinking. I'm getting diabetes from this. <laughs> Use real words, <laughs> <Len. Hey. laughs> I was just about to start singing that too, like it was coming out of my mouth. <laughs> Maybe yours would have been less flat. <laughs>